up, hosers? Welcome to another episode of Hyper Heroes here on Hyper RBG. Hosers now. Yeah. Hosers. Little hosers. Hosers. Little Canadian they went, hosers. They went from thumpers to hyper homies to hosers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They did. They did. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Everyone in the live chat, another Thursday night, having a good show. We're going to talk about a little bit of news, not a whole lot. It's come out in the last week. Uh, I know most people are out watching Solo Star Wars Story. Hope you guys are enjoying that. Mm -hmm. We're going to uh, touch on that a little bit. Uh, before we do, got a very special guest here. Alex Puccinelli is here. Pooch, 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 Dreams pooch. Come true when I hang out with you guys. Dreams come true when I hang out with you guys. I'm so That's glad you're here. That's going to be our new theme intro, Sorry. actually. It's just, it's a lot. That's going to be. I don't think you guys realize how obsessed I am with you. Three, I don't think you realize how obsessed we are with you. Yeah. Well, it's, you it's mutual. Have, you have a, a, a buddy who might be watching this. Uh, call I, uh, him out right now? I'm going to give a shout out <laughs> to uh, my boy, Jeff Roy. He Jeff. is He is an ADR mixer. He uh -huh. is an amazing, amazing guy. Uh, we met, I forgot the project we were working on, but he has a beautiful sleeve of Spider-Man 2 oh, wow. tattoos. Nice. And oh, that's wow. how I looked at him and I was like, like an idiot, I said, <laughs> you like Spider-Man? Of course yeah. you like spider Of course he's you like, like Spider-Man. Of course you like Spider-Man. You have your whole arm. But he's yeah. got beautiful tattoos, and we just started talking about stuff. And then he uh, Insta messaged me the other day, and he was like, how do you know Hyper RPG guys? How do you yeah. know Augie and Adam <laughs> and, and Hector? And I was like, those, come on, man. Those, come on, are, my, those are my boys. I know, I know. Those are my boys. <laughs> boys. He's yeah. like, they're talking about you on the Infinity War review. Yeah. And so yeah. we were talking. So I told him I was going to be on tonight. So Jeff Raw, you're the man. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> hope up? you're watching. Up, Jeff? Come hang out, bud. Hey, for Heck real yeah. though, Jeff said via Pooch. But uh, Jeff's not a huge fan of when we have guests on the show. Yeah. He just he, likes it to be oh, us three. Me. So the question I posit to Jeff, yeah. do you like it if Pooch is on the show right now? <laughs> do you is like this, it if you get to be this, on the show? Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Roy, get on the show. Um, yeah. But we chatted a little bit about it. Okay. And, okay. We, you know, I like I like to think of you guys as the ESPN analyst of this world. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, you know, Dan Patrick, Stuart Scott, <laughs> And, and the bald guy, the, with, bald with, the bald guy with glasses. I forgot his name. That's not uh, <laughs> making fun of you for glasses. Yeah. No, I'm not bald either. Boom goes the dynamite. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank well, you so much for watching. Yeah, Jeff. you're the man, Jeff. It. Well, Pooch, what what did you think of it? Uh, so we we yes. all went to go see Avengers Infinity paint War the together. Adam, paint the picture of having beautiful. Pooch I was sitting, sitting behind us. He was sitting behind us. Uh, Hector was sitting next to me, and all and every single time something epic happened. Pooch, oh my God! Yes. Yes. it yes. was incredible. What what yeah. did you think of the movie? I well, first of all, when I watch a movie, I turn into the lead singer of the B-52s. Uh -huh. I don't know what's going <laughs> yeah. on, yeah. but it's like, oh my God, look at Cap running with Black Panther. <laughs> like, it's the weirdest thing. You love that part. Dude, when I watched that part. When they jumped God. over the river. It's so good. Uh -huh. Pooch, God. Pooch uh -huh. reacted. I'll just say I, that. I was waiting for that because yeah. I was sitting right next to him. I was like, yeah. oh my God. It was I like the second time part. we had seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, again, you guys don't understand. Like, seeing that movie by myself would have been fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But seeing it with you guys... This world, this Marvel world, this, this, just this whole thing, this hyper RPG, harper, oh my God, I'm so nervous <laughs> about my three favorite people. This, this hyper RPG world is just so fun to me. And being able to experience that movie with these guys was straight up a dream come true. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I'm sorry if I ruined it. If anybody's watching that was in that theater no. with us, I'm sorry if I ruined it. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I just get so damn excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so, so we also have to say, at the end of the movie, yes. credits roll, you were the only person that goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. It took me a while to theater. understand what it yeah. was. Such a beautiful moment. The last yeah. couple of minutes of that movie, like the yeah. whole theater was just quiet. Yeah, it and was. And it was just yeah. like, oh my god! Like everyone was feeling. Yeah. I felt like what I was feeling, and yeah. that was like yeah. really. I've never felt that with a theater before, right, right. which was out of control. Right. That's the exactly. first time I think a lot of people have felt in a Marvel movie. Yeah. Period. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, even when I, we went to go see it at the L Cap, w when the credits roll, it's. There's dead silence. Yeah. yeah. And it isn't yeah. until like the names start popping up that people are like, I guess oh. it's appropriate to <laughs> yeah. clap now. Yeah. I don't You're know. Like, Wait, this is I, weird. They're like, yeah. there's more, right? There's yeah. more, right? Yeah. If I clap, it's over. So I don't yeah. want to clap. Yeah. 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 I, I sat there, I looked at Augie and I was like, I, I can't, my legs don't work. Like, I can't <laughs> physically get out of this chair yeah. right now. I don't know what's happening. I, know. I need to know what happens before I can leave. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I have to wait a yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. I know. What an experience, though. <laughs> yeah. You definitely got You definitely got to come watch number four with us. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. That's I was, happening. I was super excited when he was like, oh, Pooch is coming with us. Like, 
podcast. Yes! Yeah. We, need to, we need to swing it so that we all watch it for the first time together. Oh, yeah, I God. Think so. Which we can do out. easily. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what we have to do. You will. Thank you so much for the for the $10 tip. Oh. Fiberific hey! Hyper Heroes Live is the highlight of my week. Uh, Thank you so much. All the way from Australia. Thank you. You got to watch her you. channel, too, if Ten you're into uh, yarn and... and, and uh, what she do? Crocheting? Crocheting. Ooh, knitting and stuff I was like that. Knitting. I was going to say yeah. threading. Yeah. I'm like, that's you know, not right. Like yeah, a beautiful oven stuff. mitt, mm-hmm. maybe? Yeah, she does all oven kinds mitt. of cool stuff. Like little right. figures and she shows you a how boost, to like... Maybe a booster gold a Booster oven gold mitt? oven yes. mitt? I would use that. I'm just saying... <laughs> I bake a lot, <laughs> and I will use that. You bake a lot. I bake. I bake food, like okay. chicken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I thought you were gonna say snacks. So I was like, you chicken. showed up here empty-handed. I, I, bake chicken. I, every once in a while, <laughs> the Rock says, "Treat yourself, don't cheat yourself." Uh-huh. That's right. So That's I'm, right. I'm baking some goodies. Yeah. That's you should yeah. be. And with my boring, just plain oven mitt, I wish I had a cooler booster gold. Oven mitt. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Where Maybe I'm find somebody that. will Blue help gold. you out. Yeah. The star. A big, yeah. Beautiful Maybe. star Maybe. on it. Yeah. Oh, Have God. you? Uh, is there any other movies you've seen recently? Oh man. Uh, I here uh, not movies. I just, don't. Please don't hate me. Don't hate me. I just started watching Breaking Bad. Oh, on Netflix. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. It's and good, it's, right? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Really movie good. wise, I haven't seen any movies. Um, I rewatched. Oh, I saw Infinity War three times. Okay. Uh, Attaboy. Okay. Attaboy. Uh, okay. And then I just rewatched Civil War again. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? You, I, I, yeah. I had the same feeling. I think we yeah. all did. We walked out of Infinity War and I was like, yeah. okay, cool. I want to go rewatch literally everything. Yeah. Every, yeah. Yeah. Black yeah. Panther yep. came out yeah. on Blu ray. I yeah. watched it with yeah. the audio commentary. Then I rewatched it with just the movie itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, so that, good. that movie. Every time I've seen it, I cried. I had to hide it from Augie. Black Panther? Of course. Uh, no, uh, Infinity War. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. cried, but I was like, what part? <laughs> uh, I, it Everything? was more, it, was, it wasn't just a single part. It was just a situation. Mm-hmm. It was just mm-hmm. like a culmination of 10 years. Yep. Yeah. And just like, you get so invested in this stuff, and then you see it yeah. play out. And then you feel like you know them. Yeah. And, and then they all sad. die on you. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, but are you yeah. going to come back? Yeah. yeah. No. Like, you better come know. back. I don't I know, know what's going to happen. I know. Um, let's talk a little bit about what's been happening Woo. in the news. There was a really, very, 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 very big announcement today. Um, interestingly enough, though, L- Lucasfilm did not officially announce this. This came from Deadline uh, or, the, or Hollywood Reporter, I think. So we're kind of waiting to see when Lucasfilm will officially acknowledge this. James Mangold is writing and directing hey, a Boba Fett solo is. movie. Yeah, nice. If you know who James Mangold is, he's the director of 310 to Yuma. He also Oof. did Copland. And obviously, very recently, he did the last two Wolverine movies, The Wolverine and Logan. And the uh, Logan. Logan, <laughs> the prob- Logan. The Logan. The Logan. Yeah. Logan, probably one of my favorite movies yeah. in my top five favorite movies of last year, maybe even my top three. Yeah. So yeah. incredibly, insanely good. I truthfully, honestly, was not extremely excited about the prospect of a Boba Fett movie simply because I feel like, again, similar timelines, similar characters, things right. we've already explored. But you put James Mangold behind this movie. Yeah. And yeah. you see what he did with all the movies that he's made, yeah. especially sort of the Western vibe he's really been able yeah. to capture with some yeah. of those movies. Mm-hmm. If they do a Western, like a proper Ooh. Western Star Wars movie Ooh. where Boba Fett can be maybe a little bit of like a Mad Maxi type of a character yeah. mm-hmm. and then surround him mm-hmm. with other bounty hunters and put him on some really cool some mission, then that. I'm then I'm I'm pretty open to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I would love? Just a silent and a protagonist. Just don't even have him talk at all. Mm. Just he like, says very little. In the yeah, original. exactly. Yeah, He's so dope. quiet that I would like him to just basically don't say anything, mm-hmm. but just be a badass. Be like a John Wick. Yeah. Like that yeah. doesn't do anything. They kill you know? Boba Fett's you, dog. And yeah, exa- just, exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. John Wick, Western in space. We, yeah. It, come on. How right? badass would that? I'm a huge fan of the John Wick movies. Oh, my God. And, you kidding and, me? And seeing <sighs> Boba Fett adapted. <laughs> they can I make, know you are. They can make a hundred of those. <laughs> yeah. And it could be his cat, his gerbil, yep. his dog, his, any his animal, car, his like, lizard. Yeah, anything. I, it could be anything. His, his anything. Liar. He lost his wallet. Yeah. Like, oh, he's he, just... I, I just love Keanu. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Keanu, absolutely. I think he's a great dude, but oh. I, I'm imagining that sort of style, maybe even like, I'm going too far, but like a black and white kind of thing, but that's, you know, that's already been done with Logan. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just I'm just like bringing over my nerdiness that I've already seen with Logan mm. over to this, yeah. which is Bring which is kind of what I want to see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, I think people are, <clears throat> are confused in the chat by was saying, I don't want him necessarily on a team, but the thing that I like about Mad Max was, yes, he was on a team, but he was the drifter, the outsider, yeah, right. who, who the through circumstance had to, had to kind of work with these guys. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. think if you surround him with other, other bounty hunters, whether or not they're going on the same mission as he is, right. and right. he has to sort of beat them to the punch, or they're hunting him down, maybe, yeah. mm-hmm. there, I think there's a way mm-hmm. to do it. But. Yeah, there's something that can be done. Do you want to see his face at all? 
Well, you want we've them technically, that so it's it's so funny because I want to, yeah. I think a lot of people tend to forget that we've already seen what Boba Fett looks like. He looks like Tamara Morrison. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because Boba Fett is a clone of Jango Fett. He was a great um, actor. Yeah. So yeah. Actor. there Go was a there was a him. there was a question on movie fights today. Actually, I was watching. I got a little irritated. Um, who would you cast as Boba Fett? And it was like Chiwetel Ejiofor. Yeah. And Edgar Ramirez. Uh, and I forget uh, who the other actor or Logan yeah. Lerman. I'm like, no, you get Tamara Morrison or yeah. Daniel Logan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's it. There's no other options. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> they, they are Logan. They were here too. Yeah. There's, there's Tamara Morrison yeah. as Jango Fett, the mm-hmm. adult, uh, the adult version of what Boba Fett would look like, yep. and then the mm-hmm. other photo is Daniel Logan in a costume that he had made as an adult Boba Fett. And so Daniel Logan is the actor that played young Boba. Young Fett, Boba Fett. Like the, so clone, yeah. the clone yeah. of Jango. Yes. I like how like yeah. I back at that picture. Like I don't. I imagine that. Boba Fett's always looking at you with those eyes, even under the mask. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. he's just always just, got that sneer on yeah. like, his face. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, so, okay, so here's what separates this movie and why I'd like to see this more than a Han Solo movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in, in I feel like in the Han Solo movie, everything we need to know about Han was really explained to us, not in full detail, but well. Like you get you get mm-hmm. to know Han through other people's stories and talking about what a scoundrel he was and what yeah. like a, what 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 kind of like a, a thief he was and everything like that. And that comes across well. Like you hear the legends and you build it up in your head. When you don't hear much about about Boba yeah. Fett, yeah. like he's just a silent assassin. He's there because he deserves to be there and you don't know why and yeah. you know he's he going to wreck some shit. Something. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see some movies where he's wrecking some shit. Yeah. You know, it's not like I don't need to see where Han Solo's blaster came from. Yeah. I don't need to see where like right. all this other stuff, like all the events of, of Han Solo's life can be condensed and shown in one movie. I don't want to see something like that. Mm-hmm. I want to see... Yeah. Boba Fett go on this awesome adventure yeah. in space. I just want a chapter yeah. out of his life of like, exactly. I went on this one mission and this is what happened. That's exactly, it. Mm-hmm. exactly. And and you could do that because that's how the character of Boba Fett is kind of set up. Mm-hmm. When we meet him, it's just another bounty hunt for him. It's yeah. not necessarily like, I'm here to be involved in this giant mega space battle. He's there just to hunt some people yeah, and yeah, kill yeah. him. But in the, in, in the Star Wars movies, is he known as one of the deadliest uh, dudes in the galaxy. Yes, because yeah. in, in, in Empire, Darth Vader recruits select bounty hunters to and try to hunt what? down the money in okay. Falcon. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, one gotcha. of them. Yeah, so of he's course. definitely yeah. one of the best, better known uh, assassins, bounty hunters in the Star Wars universe. Well, so yeah, absolutely. he's obviously built that reputation. So it'd be nice to see just like a piece of that, right, yeah, right, of, right, that right. of that reputation building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could be really interesting. But again, I, yeah, like Augie's saying, I don't need it over explained to me. I don't need to know no, no. exactly to, to the detail of what he did between episodes three and this movie. Yeah. I just want a little like in and out of his story. Right. Exactly. And if it adds a little bit more sort of, I don't want to it could even add a little bit more mystery to the character of like Absolutely. why is he you know he's so silent how does how mm-hmm. like just a something a little bit of something but i think really sticking to like yeah. the true western vibe yeah mm-hmm. i think that's what could make it a really fun movie yeah um a lot of people are asking whether they'll do it as a movie that takes place after return of the jedi and he actually does escape the sarlacc pit mm. I think you can do that. I think there's potential for that. I think there's a possibility to do that. Yeah. Kinda, Remember that cool little trailer, trailer yeah. we saw where yeah. he pops out of the desert? Yeah. yeah that was cool. Um, I, I would be intrigued to see sort of what that story could be. Yeah. I think if you do it sort of in the era between episodes three and four, you can ex- you can explore other things. Yeah. And again, because we probably won't see his face a lot, Tamara Morrison is, I think, 60 so you could Is get really? someone who, who's oh. a little bit younger, oh, yeah. which but is then happened when to the he voice. takes his helmet off. Yeah, just do the Marvel you know? thing where they yeah. make them look younger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, or he could have. I mean, no, there's no. Yeah, we really like Tamora Morrison to come back because he's a great actor. And yeah. he's great. If the only it's way amazing. that makes sense, like chronologically, is if it's set after Return of the Jedi and Boba Fett crawls out of the Sarlacc pit, and then yeah. we we check in with him maybe 15 years mm-hmm. later, mm-hmm. and it's however old he looks then. Then you could. Yeah. I would even also be fine with that. Mm-hmm. Like just hearing you guys talk about this and and reminding me what James Mangold did as a filmmaker, especially right. with the character of Wolverine, who right. has a lot of similarities yeah. to like this kind of Boba Fett yeah. style <laughs> character, is making me more excited. Because when yeah. I heard this yeah. news today, I'm gonna be honest. I'm like I'm burnt out on Star Wars characters we already know. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah. burnt out on that. Like I really want new Star Wars. Right. Yeah. I just right. recently did like a um kind of a, a, a like a checklist, and I was going through a bunch of Star Wars comics that I have and haven't read yet and want to get from the new Marvel line, and a lot of those are so so good. But most of the Star Wars comics that they're producing right now. Mm-hmm 
are set in the A New Hope Empire Strikes Back Return of the Jedi yeah. era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And there's some stuff that kind of happens in the Clone Wars era, and there's a very little that happens in the Resistance era with like so Poe Dameron. So it's Luke, Leia, and Han. Yes, yeah. because those are like the, the characters of Star Wars. And I think that that's, that's totally valid because yeah. everybody loves those characters. But I, there's also a side of me that's like, but what else? Like, I want to yeah. move yeah. on from this. Yeah. yeah. We have The Last Jedi that, to me, kind of like future-proofed Star Wars forever, where they're, yeah. they're basically summed up. They're like, this is going to happen forever. There will yeah. always be bad forces that rise up, and there will yeah. always be good, good and even like that, force users, mm-hmm. like that little broom kid. That's the whole point of, I think, <laughs> yeah. that movie. Exactly. And it's like, and the other point was like, it's we can't just keep relying on Luke as mm-hmm. much as we love him. Yeah. He has, he, he here's his little final <clears throat> legendary moment, but it's, he will not be the last Jedi. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't, I wasn't excited about, oh, great, another character that we've seen a little bit of before. Yeah. I would have even been more intrigued, especially after. We've actually seen the solo movie, mm-hmm. and we were all iffy about like another another actor playing Han. I don't know yeah. if it would work. People were pitching like Millie Bobby Brown as young Princess Leia yeah. mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Stranger Things. And at first, I was like, I don't know. But after seeing Solo, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm actually okay with other younger actors, different you know types of actors playing maybe some roles we've already seen. I'm honestly, yeah. I'm fine with that. I don't yeah. think that Luke, Leia, and Han should be that precious. That's but certain, sacred. Yeah, that's sacred. Mm-hmm. But certain mm-hmm. characters, it's like you can't get other, anybody other than Mark Hamill. He was. Right. 17 you know his character was like 20 19 or 20 or whatever um and 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 if they do an obi-wan movie we might see a young luke actually we might see like a 10 year old luke and i'm like that's fine too because it's not he's not luke until he's luke but princess leia people were pitching they're like she's learning how to do spy shit when she's like 16 Mm, jimmy smith's bring him back bail organa you know this kind of thing of like actually yeah that kind of that would be really interesting and and we just all love carrie fisher and princess Mm -hmm. leia so much yeah that some people were expressing like kind of being bummed out at like Boba Fett who's such a thin character mm-hmm. but a fan favorite like gets the movie before exploring Obi-Wan or right. you know Princess right. Leia or um I don't know other characters I was going to say we need more female characters as well but we've had Rogue One had a female protagonist oh, and then yeah. the new trilogy has got mm-hmm. Rey but it's still it's like I'm I'm still interested that's why I'm like bring Tomorrow back as yeah. Boba mm-hmm. like and mm-hmm. have him take that helmet off and yeah. we see this New Zealand guy yeah. being Boba Fett you know like that shit's awesome and yeah. that would be amazing just to have a New Zealand lead exactly right. yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. exactly yeah. yeah I feel like if they got that he could easily rope in Taika Waititi to be a cameo as like a Star Wars alien. That would be amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like, awesome. Or like, like he, as a vampire that he runs into yeah. Like, yeah. on some vampire sure. planet. You just, I feel like if they got tomorrow, like they could get all of New Zealand to be like, yeah, we'll help. We'll yeah, definitely yeah. We'll help, help you make this yeah. film. It'll be yeah. great. And then they go and, you know. Yeah. But yeah, so it's like, but with everything you guys just said, I think that Mangold, if anybody could do it, he could absolutely make a really compelling Boba Fett movie. Mm-hmm, it would mm-hmm. probably be super dope. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. of course, I would go see it, try yeah, it out, yeah, and I would probably, yeah. I would hopefully like love it. Yeah, you know, and that's cool. But I just, I still want to see outside of Han, sure. Luke, and Leia characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. this is a perfect opportunity, opportunity to do that, where you can just explore bounty hunters. Who are they in the yeah. Star Wars universe? Yes. What is their purpose? Exactly. And exploring that sort of Wait underground. A minute. Yeah. No, if they do this, they're gonna have a Han Solo cameo. Played by Alden to. Ehrenreich they because, don't have to. but again, man, you know, like we talked about this. It's like <laughs> it as soon as Han Solo was announced, we're like, we're gonna see the Kessel Run, and we did. That's in the movie, <laughs> and the fact yeah. that Han has a moment in Empire where he's like, or was it in Return of Jedi where he's like, oh. Boba Fett, Boba Fett, like he yeah, knew yeah. him. Oh, yeah. yeah, we yeah. never saw them interact. I, in I know exactly how they you know? could do it. Yeah, I don't know if Alden. I know. Uh, it's not a spoiler. I could say it. But I think at the end of the Boba Fett movie, mm-hmm. you could introduce if it Han. takes place if it takes place before Episode Four, the very very end of the movie, Boba Fett goes to Job the Hut, and right. that's the mm-hmm. first time you actually see them, Han and him interact possibly yeah. because yeah. we know that Han knows Job the Hutt yeah. before so, exactly yeah. yeah exactly yeah. so and that's yeah. and that's only if they decide to set that movie in that time period right 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 um, yeah. I remember reading a I don't know how long ago it was but someone even came up with the idea of like what if they did a movie and like this is a very very thin you'd have to really flesh it out in some mm-hmm. way but what if they did a movie set between episodes five and six and it's Boba Fett's story of actually transporting Job or Han Solo to Job of the Hutt mm-hmm. and everything that inca- that happens on and the way just, there. It's just a two-hour movie of like here's two hours of Boba Fett's life where shit goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. 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 He loses the carbonite. And you know, are there, that's are there very bounty hunters John trying to hunt him, right hunt him down? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. very yeah. John Wicky cool. that they could do yeah. right there. So like, I mean, yeah. maybe there's, yeah. there's yeah. potential. Fine, Have him just like murdering fools, just an yeah. expert gun skills, yes. and just that's what I want to see. Like that, that would that that to me is what Boba Fett movie should be. Yeah. yeah, it should yeah. be all Lead about redemption. death and destruction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, 
He's a bounty hunter. Yeah. <laughs> That's his job. He yeah. he captures and kills dudes. Yeah. yeah. Or do you make it a goofy space comedy with how he died <laughs> and it's just just him like yeah. pretending to be badass and then yeah. it's just him like tripping <laughs> <laughs> accidentally shooting people as he jumps yeah. and something like that yeah. 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 and he's then the, the Wilhelm he's scream the and Mr. Yeah. Bean of the yeah. Star Wars yeah. galaxy yeah. you're just like we the uh, audience sees how much of a fuck up he is but yeah. everyone's like yeah. that Boba Fett he's yeah. a real he's badass, badass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. oh god how yeah. does he do it yeah it's all goofy accidents I yeah. know yeah we'll see I mean again it wasn't until James Mangold that I was like Damn. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm on board now. Um, I'm okay and and I that. get it. And I get it. And I get that people mm-hmm. want to get out of that, uh, out of the same characters. But I think that the difference between a Boba Fett and a Han Solo is, like you said, Boba mm-hmm. Fett is an unexplored character. Yeah. Not that yeah. he has to be. Right. I think. Right. I, I, I you can do, just think do more vil- with it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of validity to his mystery. Mm, yeah. Um. So I get why people are more fine with Boba Fett mm-hmm. and not as excited about like Han Solo, Leia, or Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. Sure. I get mm-hmm. it. Sure. I totally get it. I'm even okay with an Obi Wan movie. It's just right. the 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 trilogy, the 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 three sacred characters. There's right. just like I feel like I've gotten to know them. Yeah. I feel like I know them enough. Let's move on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's time to yeah. move on. Yeah. There's other things that we can explore here. Yep. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. So let's move on from this topic. Moving Adam. on from this topic, we're going to talk about uh, Andy Circus. Awesome. Maybe potentially. Who knows. Uh, interested at, at possibly joining the Batman movie. Um, he was recently being interviewed by Joe Blow. They were interviewing him about the Mowgli movie that he's directing. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a chance to see the entire trailer, but from what I saw, looks like it could be fun. Mm-hmm. I do feel like that every time Disney makes a movie, Warner Brothers does one that's in the complete opposite tone, mm-hmm. which is very interesting. Um, but Andy Serkis is an amazing performer, and I don't doubt that whatever he directs, because he's worked mm-hmm. with so many amazing directors, that there's a lot of potential for this movie to be really cool. Yeah. But... The interviewer did ask him, you know, would you be interested in, in, in returning to work with Matt Reeves yeah. uh, working on the Batman movie? And he says, oh, for sure. Uh, I mean, I go to the edge of the created universe with Matt Reeves. <laughs> I mean, he's the most brilliant director. I would work with anything with him again. You know, I mean, I absolutely adore him and we're very good friends, close friends. And I think he's an extraordinary director. Aww. So for sure. That's awesome. That's um, great. Andy Serkis is an amazing actor, period. He's, he's, yeah. The he's fact that he has that level, not... Yeah. Gotten any sort of nomination or recognition yeah. for his performance as Caesar, Gollum, any other digital CG character Kong's, he's played, Kong. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was Snoke. Yeah, he was great as Familiar right. Snoke. He was great as uh, Ulysses Claw. Yeah, he's uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, he's great. And now yeah. he's out of a job because every character's dead. So <laughs> this is the perfect true. opportunity to it's put true. him into yeah. a Batman movie. Um, if we're just speculating, we're just speculating. speculating. Let, me cu- let me cut you off, Pooch, because I yeah. think I know what you're going to oh, okay. ask. Yes. And I'm yes. about to answer it. I love it. Thank you. I would, because he is such an actor's actor, he's so about the craft. You know I, know who say? I, I know who you're you know going to say. say. I was about to say this. Fan favorite Batman villain we have yet to see live action. One, two, three. Clayface. Clay Come on. Yes. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yep. Basil oh. Karloff is his name, I think, or Car- or, or Carlo. Look at that right there, and that's yep. what Crimson there you go. Knight Crimson said. Knight Seven Hundred yep. says it, it. And you do that Batman the Animated Series take where he's a good-looking actor yep. who, like, or maybe he's not a good-looking actor, or whatever. He can't get work, so he undergoes like a procedure so that he's able to like shape shift and kind right. of and kind of right. mess with that. How right. perfect would that be for Andy Serkis? That would be amazing. To, to play an actor who feels like he's limited in yeah. his physical capability, yep. that he has to use some kind of enhancement yep. to mm-hmm. to gain mm-hmm. more like notoriety in different types <clears throat> yeah. of roles. Exactly. I, and I, then he loses control. Yeah. Yes. And I then read it's a this. big CG creature. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I read yeah. this. Ooh. I read this. The first thing I thought of was, was Clayface. Clayface. Yeah. I'm sure. It's Man. So perfect. What yeah. was the follow-up so question perfect. from the interview? I would have yeah, been like, the Clayface? Clayface? I would have been like, you should be Clayface. Yeah. I know. Do you know about Clayface? Let me tell yeah. you about Clayface. Yeah, let me tell you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, it's like, if you yeah. it, to get an actor like this, of this caliber, who yeah. really understands that world mm-hmm. and that sort of the acting and how that whole thing and works. Matt Reeves yeah. has wow. already worked with like, like high-end visual effects in a live-action yeah. world. Yes. And yeah. he's going to be doing a Batman movie. Batman has so many villains that we've already seen in live-action and it's like, okay, but now we're at a point where the technology can do some of the more comic booky villains, mm-hmm. ones that Christopher Nolan would have never done because they're too comic booky right, and too unrealistic. Right. Yeah. I'm talking Mr. Mr. Freeze, Freeze, Poison, Poison Ivy, Ivy, you know, yep. Killer Croc, who we've seen in Suicide Squad, Clayface. These villains are like people are people are saying, you know, he could be Condiment King or Firefly or all these guys that are just like guys yeah. with gadgets. It's like, mm. sure, but wouldn't it be great if the Matt Reeves Batman movie was like I mean, if Batman Ben Affleck already fought fucking CG Doomsday. Yeah. The sky's the limit. Like you can right. have him fight Clayface, and it's not out of the realm of like uh, it's not a good Batman world. No, right, forget right. about it. Don't don't yeah. do that. It's yeah. already the world's already blown up. Yep. So yep. Clayface, man. 
Clayface is great. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about Clayface for forever, though. Yeah. Like, we've, yeah. we've, we've been wanting him to be in the that's Batman the big series spectacle. for a long time. That's a big CG but spectacle do, character. I so, see. What, what's the, like, do we know anything about the movie? Anything nope. from the script? Nothing nope. from the. Nah. So, nope. do you think nope. he's watching us right now and we yeah. just said Clayface in unison? So, he's going to be like, yeah. I'm going to do Clayface. <laughs> I <laughs> watch awesome. Hyperheroes. I'm I mean, going to do Clayface. Yeah, that, that would be really cool. No. Do you know anybody else that might be able to get that Clayface idea in there? Uh, I'm on it. Okay, I'm on yeah. it. Cool. I, will, I will. That's your homework. I, well, I, I will think, figure something. Think out. about this, guys. Matt Reeves comes off of Apes. He gets, mm. you know, like yeah. like persuaded, bribed, paid mm-hmm. to come mm-hmm. over to Warner Brothers to do the Batman. Mm-hmm. Matt Reeves knows what has come before, what's worked, and what hasn't. Matt yeah. Reeves is a great storyteller. I guarantee you, and I'm sure he knows the comic book world, and I'm sure he knows Batman yeah. lore. Yeah. I guarantee you he's already considered Clayface Absolutely. as a cinematic, mm-hmm. like, visual villain that we could see. Mm-hmm. And if Andy Serkis just said that, I guarantee you he, the one of the things he's thought of is, I'd like to work with some of the actors I just worked with. Yeah. Andy Serkis is brilliant. Well, yeah. It would be cool. He hasn't played Batman. He hasn't played a Batman character yet. It would be cool to bring him over. I guarantee yeah. you mm-hmm. he's already thought this. Yeah. Somebody's already thought, what about Andy for Clayface? Mm-hmm. And Matt's like, well, let me see if this will work Check. for the story. Yeah. I'd be like, I bet at this point, Matt's like, what's the best, what's the story you're trying to tell and which characters do you need to utilize to mm-hmm. tell that story? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's helpful to work from the villain and then work your way out. Yeah. Other times it's like Spider-Man Homecoming. We want Peter Parker to be challenged in this way. Mm-hmm. Here's mm-hmm. a villain we haven't used yet. Yep. What if we, boom, the vulture is now his girlfriend's dad. Yeah. Do you that see what I'm saying? It's like, and then they found great that story reverse engineer yeah. that's, that, you know, for Peter. So Matt Reeves just has to figure out Clayface, whatever the origin's going to be, if Andy could play it versus Ben Affleck Batman, is yeah. this the story I want to tell or does he want to yeah. tell? But I really want to do like a psychological thriller. It's like, okay, then use the Riddler or yeah. use, you yeah. know, like mm-hmm. Hugo Strange or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. it depends on what Matt wants to do. I guarantee you they've already thought of this, guys. I yeah. hope so. Like months ago. I promise. It would be it would be awesome though. Plus Andy Circus is it, it makes sense now he's doing the Warner Brothers Mowgli movie, so he's already sort yeah. of in that family. He's done movies for New Line, you know, he did the Lord of the Rings movies, which is a subsidiary of Warner Brothers. So he He's he's already sort of in that group, and now having Matt Reeves yeah. in there, it makes it even more of an obvious yeah. sort of choice mm-hmm. to, to... I think even if it wasn't Clayface, I think no matter what, mm-hmm. I would be very surprised if, if Matt Reeves does not announce yeah. Andy Serkis' involvement yeah. in some yeah. capacity. Andy Serkis is Victor Freeze, Mr. Some, Freeze. That would be dope. Some Great. Thing. Pooch, thoughts? You look very pensive over there. I'm just, I, well, I love listening because Clayface is a character I don't know much about. Oh, okay. So okay. I've, we need to I've go seen back and just watch the episodes the cartoon, of, yeah, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That's basically um, what you need to know him from. But I can't mm-hmm. remember too much about him. But after hearing you guys, I'm sold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because especially yeah. with, I always get a little nervous doing like big comic book characters in right. movies. But after right. watching Infinity War and seeing yeah. Thanos, right. who could have gone. Either, Either way, way yeah. Seeing how so real bad. and uh, beautiful that was. Yeah. yeah. And Josh Brolin is an amazing actor. Oh, absolutely. Andy Serkis is just as good. Maybe, I mean, I don't yeah. want to say, it's yeah. very subjective, but Andy yeah, Serkis yeah, yeah. is a freaking beast. Yeah, yeah. he's amazing. Absolutely. And and in that world of, of CG, like, Josh, that was his first time, I think, doing it, Josh it Brolin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. you get someone who's who's done it before and yeah. crushes it every time. Right, it's right, not like right. he puts in subpar performances. Oh, yeah. Like You, you kind of leave every... Andy Circus. It's not even a, a Andy Circus movie, but you always leave like, dang, who played that? That was killing Andy Circus. Oh my god, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, 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 like yeah. he was actually my favorite part of the Last Jedi. Like I loved yeah. all the Snoke. Snoke, Snoke yeah. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. So yeah. seeing him as this character, it seems to fit. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think it would be Absolutely. I think it would be amazing to watch him. Yeah. I mean, I'll see him in anything though. And Matt yeah. Reeves is such a director who cares about detail mm-hmm. that if he was gonna do Clayface. He wouldn't do it un- unless he was completely 100% satisfied with the look, the design, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. visual effects elements, all, all that sort of stuff. If he didn't so feel confident good. that he could do it, he won't do it. But yeah. he is one of those few directors that I'm like, if they announce that Batman is going to face off against Clayface in Matt Reeves' movie, <laughs> I'm very confident that they'll be able to pull it off. Yeah. It'll look yeah. amazing. Because yeah. those Planet of the Apes movies, yeah. the visual got, effects are incredible. They got better incredible. and better, man. So good. Yeah. Yeah. They got better and better. Yeah. yeah, so 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 good. All right. Is there any other villain that you guys would be interested in seeing? Let's let's run down the list. Okay, yeah. let's run down the list. And if we want to use movies, let's use movies because I have like kind of a hierarchy of Batman villains. At the top is the Joker. Yeah. S- next to him because they sort of go, go in a pair, Harley Quinn. So we can count them as and, one sort of and entity. Then after that, it's the Moth guy, right? <laughs> Killer Moth. Yeah. Killer Moth. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> right. Pooch. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. So third, <laughs> third is Killer Moth. Played Killer by Moth. Alex yeah. Puccinelli yeah. in the Lego Batman, Batman movie. That's right. That's right. Oh, Lego right. Batman! Yeah. 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 So good. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, I don't know how you guys missed it. I don't know how you missed it. Yeah. Oscar performance. Uh, you could play him in live action. Kill yeah. him off. Yeah. Yeah. I could play I'm Kill just going to say that one line, though. Yeah. Just the, Wait, just the, yeah. <laughs> um, no, you've got you've got the Joker. Then you've got, I feel like, Two-Face is a great up there yeah. Yeah. personal connection villain to Batman because of, the, yeah. because of the Harvey Dent connection. Then I would go Catwoman's up there. Um, I would go Scarecrow, but the way they did him in the video games, the Batman okay. Arkham Knights video games, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, with the fingers yeah. that were syringes, that was great. Mm -hmm. You've got, uh, and these are all villains that we've seen already in movies, but you've got, other than like Killer Moth we haven't seen yet in live action, we've got um, uh, Poison Ivy, uh, another great villain who we haven't seen since Uma Thurman, um, mm -hmm. Bane we just saw with Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Freeze again. We haven't seen since oh, Arnold, and Mr. It. Freeze is like bring him can, back. You would want to see Freeze. Huh? Bring him back as a, Arnold as Freeze. As Arnold, <laughs> yeah. There's I a, won't yeah. see it. Matt Reeves, get Arnold. <laughs> That's great. Get him. I'm here uh, to end the party. Yeah. You, have the, <laughs> you have the non-powered criminal masterminds that are, include the Riddler, Penguin, Penguin yeah. um, maybe Hugo. Yeah, Hugo mm -hmm. Strange Hugo doesn't have Strange. power except for yeah. when they give him the sort of Bane, the Bane thing, thing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then you have the powered ones like Killer Croc is like a like a physical yeah, sort of threat. Yeah. Somebody mentioned Hush in the chat, yeah. which is like a psychological sort of, and he just has Did like guns and stuff. you say Man Bat already? No, we haven't said Man Bat. Yeah, and again, Man Andy Serkis would, would be a okay. great Man Bat, but yeah. I'm like, Ooh. Kirk, Lang Dr. Ooh. Kirk Langstrom. But I'm like, that's yeah. that's cool, but I'd rather see right, right. Somebody Clayface. Else. Because even in like Batman v Superman, there was that Bat creature in the dream nightmare sequence yeah, that yeah. Bruce Wayne had. And I'm like, you could, that could just be man bad. Yeah. And that's cool. But I almost felt even with that, I'm like, we've already kind of seen that. Yeah, like I had, yeah. I, I, even with Sandman, Thomas Hayden church and Spider-Man three, I'm like, right. it was okay. They could have gone full on Sandman, like yeah. crazy visual yeah. effects with it. Like mummy style. God, Ooh. even <laughs> like, but you know how mummy yeah. returns was and mummy yeah. when like 1999 yeah, that yeah. blew our minds and we watch yeah. it now and it's shit. Right, yeah. And like, <laughs> like, like whatever the equivalent to 1999 mummy, you could do that yeah. with Clayface today. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, Whoa! But yeah, then you twenty years from now, TV. we're like, this is garbage. Yeah. This is real bad. Yeah, absolutely. A bunch yeah. of other. Uh, yeah. Who was so the? I haven't seen this movie in a long time. But who was the the villain in Mask of the Phantasm? The Phantasm. Phantasm. It was his mm -hmm. name, the Phantasm. Yeah, yeah. Her okay, name so he was, was her the name. Phantasm. Oh, her name. That's right. I need to rewatch that movie. I think her, 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 her name was Andrea Beaumont. Beaumont. I think. That's what it was. Or yep. something Beaumont. Phantasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a great. But that's like a one-off story because they've never used the Phantasm. It's twenty-fifth anniversary, I believe. Yeah. 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 Dang. But that was great. Crazy. Who else have we seen that we haven't uh, covered? Like Penguin, I mentioned him. Yeah. Um, Riddler. Did we talk about Riddler? Yeah. We didn't yeah. talk. Well, yeah, Riddler. Oh, kind yeah. of Riddler. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the Raj, Raj, Raj Ghul or Ra's al Ghul uh, to, uh -huh. to, to Scarecrow, to Joker, to yeah. Two Face, to. Um, all those classic, Talia, classic all the, the Christopher Nolan Christopher villains, Nolan villains right. which I'm like, this thing's a little fresh, but whatever. Yeah, and that's the thing too is I, I think now with this universe, and I know I know Matt Reeves has said he kind of wants to go a little bit more like noir with it, so yeah. I don't know. Um, but I think this is a perfect opportunity. We yeah. sort of live in this comic book world now where mm -hmm. there really are no limits, especially when you do have characters like yeah. Doomsday and Thanos. Yes. Mm -hmm. Big, mm -hmm. huge sort of like... Like world enders. World enders, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. big CG Steppenwolf. things. Yeah. Yeah, man. You you can get away with it. But it obviously, it has to be done with care. Yeah. That's it. It has to be done it with care. It could still work for noir because yes. like Basil Karloff or Carlo could be the villain or a threat or an antagonist for right. the first two acts. Mm -hmm. right. And he's just a guy who's like a gangster and it's yeah. very film noir. The third act is this dude unleashes and he's Clayface and yeah. Bruce Wayne's like, oh shit. And he has yeah. to go yeah. you know, fight Clayface. Yeah. So, so they, could could, they could also kind of put it into, since it's being called The Batman, they can do it kind of like a year one situation where it's mm -hmm. like, this is the first year that Batman is like, the detective Batman, not the mm. techno gadget, multi millionaire yeah. Batman. Just cool. like, I need to, there, there's somebody got murdered and it's very high profile, and I'm going to find the person who did this mm -hmm. and start it off that way. Because the Batman movie's not set in, it's a, is it outside the, the DC? We don't, we don't, don't know. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no, no confirmation. Details. I always get confused. Yeah, there's no, I, is ben so Affleck doing I have that? a feeling we don't know that, that either. it is still in within the franchise. I think so too. I have a feeling that Ben might come back to do it. Even if not, it'll still be like. That Batman will still be able to interact with Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, mm, yeah, and be in a yeah. future Justice League. It's just that when Matt Reeves and whoever else said it's not connected, they just mean, guys, don't expect me to do a bunch of Justice League bullshit. You're right. not gonna yeah. see Flash and Cyborg. Batman He's movie. like, I just want to do Batman. Right, I right, think right. that that's what that means. Gotcha. Yeah, I agree. I think that's why 
they're, it's fine. It's tentatively totally the Batman because mm-hmm. it's just oh. the Batman. I like that. Yeah, yeah, which I which I'm again I'm totally 100 percent on board for. I don't need yeah. mm-hmm. every single movie to be in, interconnected in that sort of a way mm-hmm. yeah. where it's yeah. always like, well, we gotta set up the next thing, or we gotta you know uh, other other superhero movies have have done that, and sometimes yeah. it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it, it really just depends. But if Matt Reeves just solely wants to focus on Batman and tell mm-hmm. a story mm-hmm. from his world, mm-hmm. really put us inside of Gotham City in that sort of noir detective yeah. story, yeah. Um, then I. I think that really is the way to go. So mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, any circus for uh, Clayface. Yeah. I'm, I'm all in on that. <laughs> yeah. That would be that. tight. Tight, tight, yeah, tight. Let's do that. Um, you mentioned J- Jake Gyllenhaal earlier. When? Or no, sorry. <laughs> you mentioned Ben Affleck maybe maybe <laughs> oh, coming back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal potentially maybe going to replace him. We don't know. This potential uh, casting news may or may not change that. Apparently, he's up for the role of Mysterio in Spider-Man Homecoming mm, that, 2. That mm. Hector, this is a character that you are not that excited about being made into a movie. We've yes. talked mad yeah. shit about Mysterio. Yes, we have. <laughs> Expl- I have strong feelings. Explain yeah. Mysterio. Mysterio like is another, three se- is another fictional failed actor yep. named Quentin Beck, uh-huh. okay. who was a phenomenal actor, but he, was like, he had like an ugly mug. He yeah. had like like a big yeah. nose, big big like a big brow, like a Neanderthal. Not classically pro- handsome. Not classically gotcha. handsome, mm-hmm. and could not get the roles he wanted to play. Okay. And right. so what he did is he he turned into a special effects expert when oh. he was working in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, he he like like actual practical special effects right. and visual effects and like things like mirrors and smoke, you know, yeah. machines and lasers, and and laser and projections, and, projections, and, projections stuff, yeah. and all that stuff. So that he got real good at that, and then used that to like rob banks to get money as a mm-hmm. Spider-Man villain in New York, so that yeah. he could use that money to. I don't know. I forget get what his dumb surgery. origin is. Maybe, or just like, yeah. for whatever reason, maybe get notoriety. I don't know. But like, that was his thing. Is he was mad at the world because he's like, I'm ugly and I can't get good roles and I'm a yeah. phenomenal actor. So I'm going to use my craft to like oh. rob banks and, and so fool people. Spider-Man. And trick so why people, do yeah. you get gorgeous Jake Gyllenhaal to play that <laughs> ugly man? <laughs> Good question. Great, great That's question. actually, I had not thought about that. Because with that picture, I'm like, yeah. he's a great looking dude. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, he, uh, here's, my, here's my spiel on Mysterio, Quentin Beck. I really like the character in comic books. Mm-hmm. When he shows up, it's fun. Mm-hmm. I'm not super fond of like Kevin Smith, writer Kevin Smith used him as a daredevil villain real briefly because nobody was using Mysterio and he made mm-hmm. Mysterio somebody who like found out that he had cancer or something and kind of had one last hurrah but decided to fuck with Daredevil instead of Spider-Man because mm-hmm. Kevin Smith was writing Daredevil comics mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. And then Mysterio ended up like committing suicide but still like messing with Daredevil in a big bad way. Yeah. Um, and then he like died and then he came back to life and blah, blah, blah. But so I'm fine with him in the comics when he shows up and he's a Spider-Man villain that young Peter Parker fights or even, you know, regular age Peter Parker fights because of his shtick and his gimmick. Right. My thing is from the beginning of when Spider-Man movies are being made, I was like, they should get to eventually the Sinister Six Mm -hmm. and the Sinister Six, the original Sinister Six is comprised of the characters, Dr. Octopus, Kraven the Hunter, Vulture, Electro, Sandman, and Mysterio. And my thing was like, all of these five dudes are good to go. Mysterio, I never wanted to see in a movie because his whole power set is movie special effects. <laughs> That's his powers. So I'm like, I don't want to see a movie that uses special effects. It would be it would Has turn into it would turn into the the movie that had two movies made. Now you see me. That where movie, they're using CG, and I'm like, That's CG. That's that not a chance. That's not an illusion. Win an Oscar because Hollywood loves movies about Hollywood. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but it's like it's again it's it is like um and kind of to an extent the illusionist and the prestige like these are movies about magicians like real world magicians yeah. like David Blaine type that use Hollywood special effects it's like oh how did he evaporate into water fucking CG yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and then you're telling me the people in the movie are like how did they do that I'm like it's uh, like I, 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 I yeah. watch the trailer I'm like this yeah. is the dumbest idea ever Absolutely. that at the end they're like here's how we did it detective and they show you the right. real thing and I'm like but you guys didn't do a practical yeah. You know, illusion like magicians do. Right, you use exactly. co- like movie special effects. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I never wanted Mysterio to show up as a guy who has movie special effects being amplified and being uh, like helped in the movie by its own special effects. Because right. I'm like, it's just a huge cheat. It's just real dumb. Yeah. yeah. He- having said all of that, the way that they changed, like I mentioned earlier, the Vulture mm-hmm. to fit the story of Peter Parker, the way that they've changed in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, villains like the Mandarin. Yeah. Villains like Killmonger. Yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? Like the way that they've able, been able to update the villains where it's like, man, maybe something quite doesn't work on the page. They know what to adapt from the page and right. they know what to leave on the page. 
I have full confidence that Spider-Man Homecoming 2 or whatever is going to feature like a version of Mysterio that I will think like this is actually super dope. And yeah. I'm sure that they'll change it. Maybe he has actual superpowers. Maybe it's more of a scarecrow type character mm -hmm. who just gasses mm -hmm. Spider-Man and then Spider-Man has a hallucination. He's freaking out. And yeah. he's done that in the comics as well, but like he's also done like mirror trickery and bullshit that I'm like, don't, <laughs> don't, you know, that it appears as if Mysterio's flying, but it's yeah. actually like a contraption and, you know, and he's and, able to like yeah. trick and fool Spider-Man's He's just dangling off a helicopter. Yeah. yeah, this kind yeah. of thing where I'm like, don't do it unless you're unless you're going to commit to be like, we've done all practical stunts right. for the character of Mysterio. Right. You're going to be blown away when you go see the movie. But even yeah. then, I'm like, but don't do that because the MCU is full of CG. Spider-Man yeah. himself it can be like a fully CG character. Yeah, exactly. So it kind of needs to blend that world. So like, again, having said that, Jake Gyllenhaal, what a great actor. Uh -huh. I'm sure that they'll change up Mysterio to get me to be like, actually, that's a great take on it. Yeah. And now he can fit into a Sinister Six and I want to see him interact with the Vulture and blah, right. blah, blah, blah. So well, if you think about what his power set and what he's trying to come across is he's trying to warp reality. What if they make him a, mm -hmm. a, a, a magic user? Like, yeah. I can just mm -hmm. use Doctor Strange. Strange. Exactly, like, a, like another version of Doctor Strange. Yeah. And you can tie it in. Dark Magician. To, exactly, to sure. something else. That so, was, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, can see, I can see Jakey being a, being a magician. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Plus, we live, in a, we live in a world where alien technology is present. It's been used mm -hmm. to further the story, even in Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming. Good point. Good you, could, point. You, could re, you could find a way to use the Chitauri technology or any sort Maybe. of alien technology yeah. that yeah. has yeah. found its way to Earth I'll, to I'll, potentially give this character some, some give you this. worldly yeah. powers. I'll give you this. I don't think there's too much crossover. I can think of one example. I don't think there's too much crossover, especially mm -hmm. in the Marvel Universe and the comics world, where like a villain feels like it doesn't match with the hero. Uh -huh. The only crossover I can think of is the Mandarin the Iron Man villain from the comic books mm -hmm. is like a sorcerer that uses like magic rings. Yeah. And the reason for me it works when he fights Iron Man is because it's magic versus technology. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm like, that one I kind of let slide. Yeah. But like the X-Men, I think that their best villains are mutants or mutant related. Mm -hmm. Even Apocalypse mm -hmm. is like, he was the first ever born mutant, you know, like, like Juggernaut. It's like, all right, he gets his powers from a weird gem, but mm -hmm. he's Charles Xavier's half brother. Like they're like, yeah. it's all like related in the world. And their arch enemy, Magneto. Yes, the ultimate, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mutant freedom right. fighter or terrorist, depending right. on how you look at it. Spider-Man's villains are all tech-based and sci-fi based mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Spider-Man got his powers from science fiction, not yeah. from mysticism or from, you know, and he, and he actually has cosmic superpowers. Cosmic. Yeah. So it's like they keep these little Marvel worlds kind of together. Even mm -hmm. Daredevil is like, he had the, the, the thing hit in his eyes, but he mm -hmm. fights like criminals like the Kingpin yeah. or the Punisher or Electra or mm -hmm. all this kind of like street level, you know. Human yeah. There's, based yeah, abilities almost. Loki is not fighting Luke Cage. Those yeah. are not yeah. arch enemies. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, it, for the most part, you keep these heroes and villains in the same world uh like, but the, again having said that the one cheat i'll give is the mandarin there's not too many there's not too much crossover in other superhero characters uh villains for me i would rather they stick mysterio closer to how peter's world is with mm -hmm. that sort of sci-fi tech if you yeah. want to use the chitari the way that the vulture did fine yeah. if you want to use stark yeah. tech fine if you want to use if they want to introduce oscorp fine mm. you know like there's versions yeah, of the spider-man story yeah, we, yeah, Pim, whatever. But like, which is so great about the MCU is that like the Marvel comics, there's all these fake companies that it's all yeah. kind of like so many yeah. uh, like you so fight, much fabricated you shit. fight Roxxon, <laughs> you fight you know Hydra, just yeah. like the same sort of groups, which is yeah. fine. But like, if if Mysterio all of a sudden is like a full on Doctor Strange villain who was also trained by the Ancient One, I'll be like, that's a little, that maybe a little much. Yeah, give him the tech base, the sci fi -y thing, whatever. But the MCU works when. All the characters m get together, as we saw in Infinity War, it's fine. Because it's like, great, you're dealing cosmic, mm -hmm, space, mm -hmm. you know, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, it all mashes and mm -hmm, that's fine. But it's mm -hmm. like, if it's just going to be Spidey's movie, I'd rather it be, you know, yeah. Similar to to, to the hero. To the hero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like Mysterio is the one Spider-Man villain that like, even in the animated series, I don't... He was featured, <laughs> but I don't feel like it was as prominent as like no. Shocker, Kingpin, no. you know, all those other villains. I remember him very vividly, actually. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just because of his goofy ass suit. Like, have the you fish, seen his the, suit? The fish the fish ball. Ball. Yeah. All I remember is just like always seeing Mysterio and a puff of smoke. Look at that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at that. Like, look at that. That's can, you, can you even see through that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. It's Jacked. such a dumb, it's such a bad design yeah, with buff. his like. Oh, he, sees, he sees through those things right there. Yeah, those the little eyes. Oh, the yeah. eyes with on his chest. The grid, like, like quilted suit, suit that yeah. he has. That's and a yet, green screen suit, dog. Anytime, <laughs> I feel like any time uh, an artist has tried to update that, the next artist come, just comes right back to that because it's so iconic because yeah. it, is it is so goofy. It is iconic. It is, it's goofy. It's just I, I remember him vividly because even when I was a kid, 
before I was like really into movies, I was like, wait, so that's just movie special effects. I was like, that's pretty lame, dude. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, I was yeah. like, okay, this just trip him. Like mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. like yeah. break his knee. Because we know be how movies work. That like movie stunt yeah. teams and special effects teams have to set up this whole rig that Ex takes hours. hours. <laughs> it's like right, Mysterio. Hold on are one you second. are you Hold waiting for Spider-Man to come into this alleyway? What this if he doesn't? This particular alleyway. What yeah. if he does? You spent exactly. sixteen yeah. hours setting up a shot effectively. <laughs> yeah. One shot that harness. has to be tripped a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. And he if it's not <laughs> tripped that he way, he needs to be in the right angle. If he turns his head a little bit, he'll see the the mirror or whatever. It's like the crew of people holding ropes. Yeah. It's not a small team that needs to collapse the side of a building that's not how yeah. movies work yeah because right. i remember the first thing that i saw him do was rob a bank and when spidey went into the bank yeah he saw the bank collapsing in on him yeah you know but he was like oh my spidey sense didn't go off and so yeah. that's how he knew something was up right that was his first clue that it was like, like a projection yeah it was mm -hmm. so he would use those little tiny cubes those mm -hmm. little like glass looking cubes throw them on the ground and that would project whatever he wanted to happen. Yeah. So I was like, I'm fine with that. Back. How about yeah. this? He uses huh. the, uh, the technology introduced in Captain America Civil War that Tony Stark had when he recreated his flashback mm. and it was all like a projection on that stage. Oh. What if Mysterio steals that tech and uses barf. little projection yeah. cubes? Yeah. Was it, was it, was it barf? called barf? barf. barf. Or what yeah. Was it yeah. called barf? Yeah. yeah. What, this has, in a perfect world, if you uh -huh. had to choose, uh -huh. like this was a definite, he was either gonna be Batman or Mysterio. What would you do? Probably uh, Batman. Batman. You want Batman. him as Batman. Oh. I would want him as Batman. Like, fuck, man. This, uh, this is like, I don't know. Can I check in with Ben Affleck? How's he feeling about it? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to put him out dog. of work. We yeah. know Ben is so done with but, this role. But I want to ask, if I could hypothetically ask Ben Affleck, hey, for real, Ben, like, do you want to keep doing like, this? And for he's real, like, though. no. Yeah. Then I'll be like, then let's bring Jake in. Yeah. But if he's like, yeah, I'll do one more. Then I'll be like, all right, then we're going to give, we're going to give Jake Mysterio. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun, Ben. Like, I'd still want Jakey. Jakey dog. Jakey what dog. would Jakey dog. like? He's my buddy. In your opinion, what does Jake Gyllenhaal bring to the table as Batman? Uh, what he br well, I don't think it's necessarily, and this is gonna sound shitty of me because we've been talking about this, but it's it's the fact that I feel like Ben Affleck wants out so bad. Gotcha. We're trying that to I'm relieve like, him. Uh, let's let's give somebody else an opportunity. Like, let's mm -hmm. give Jake an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe he'll just do two movies or one movie too, and then yeah. he'll be done. But I yeah. just I feel like there's a genuineness about about Jake that he brings to every one of his roles. I've, yeah. I've seen interviews with him, and he talks about how he doesn't take a role unless he's into it 100. Yeah. percent Like he's not he's not a franchise actor, and yeah. that's the problem with him being Batman is that mm -hmm. he, if if he does take on this role of Batman, it'll probably be short lived. Like, mm -hmm. well, he'll probably do an amazing job of it, but it's it's not going to be anything where he's like. Tony Stark in it all the way through, like <clears throat> right. Robert Downey Jr. in it all the way. Right. Through well, I think, and I think that's uh, that's the thing about Jake Gyllenhaal. You look yeah. at a lot of the roles that he's done. Yeah, he's dark from his from his younger years, and even now, you know, like movies like Stronger and all this sort of stuff. And you see the commitment level, and you see mm -hmm. if you look at his career, the progression of how he's become an actor who was always good, but now there are layers to him. There's yeah. a lot of yeah. layers. He brings a lot of depth to every character right, that right, he plays. Right. So he may not necessarily. You may not look at Jake Gyllenhaal and think like. Batman, but you look at him, you're like a really good actor yeah, who really yeah, understands the character who gets lost yeah. in it. You mean Southpaw? Not a great movie. The performance? So good. Um, yeah. So good. Yo, um, when's the last time we saw an actor say, nah, he's not going to be good at that character? Yeah. Heath Ledger. Joker. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. was clowning on that yep. fool for yeah. being Joker. Mm -hmm. yep. What did he do? Mm -hmm. I mean, even Shadow Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton came prim primarily yeah. from like yeah. a little yeah. lighter-hearted, more Mr. funny Mom? movies. Yeah. Mr. Mom. Yeah. 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 He had just he had just Batman. done Beetlejuice. Yeah. He was great. He was great. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's the thing with a guy. And, you know, to Ben Affleck's credit, I think he is also somebody that is like that who bring, can bring yeah. layers to a character. Yeah. I do think that Jake Gyllenhaal maybe does a little bit better, but Ben Affleck has the directing. Ben Affleck is a really good director. Yeah, so I and and you could really see him phoning it in in Justice League. He looked like yeah. the only person that did not want to mm -hmm. be on that set. Like, yeah, he's supposed to be sort of like the separate character. Batman is mm -hmm. sort of a loner, but he was portraying like, yeah, I want to mm -hmm. be a loner in real life. I don't want to be yeah. here right now. Like, leave me alone. Plus, I do genuinely think that a guy like Ben Affleck who took the Batman role because Warner Brothers agreed to let him make his passion projects. Yeah, right. exactly. Every exactly. single time he would go in an interview, what about Batman? What about Batman? Yeah. What about right, Batman? Right, what about right. Batman? After a while, honestly, even I would be, yeah. Yeah, I'm on Ben Affleck's side. I'd be like, fuck this. Quit yeah. asking me. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm here to promote this. Yeah. I'm here to promote that. 
Quit asking about Batman. You know yeah. we're making a Batman movie. Yeah. So quit trying to like dig right, in right, and right. find out. Like exactly. you'll know when you know. Exactly. And yeah. That's it. And, and that's got to be annoying. Like Pooch, sure. when you're booster, you got to be ready for this shit, dude. Just I'm. They'll t- they can tell me to do anything, <laughs> and it, as long as I'm Booster Gold, I'm, I, I'll do ten movies before I'll yeah. do the Booster Gold movie. Do yeah. you think you would, for real though? Do you think you would ever get tired? Of, like if you if you landed the role of Booster Gold and it, I, and it was oh, good, man. I don't think so. But this yeah. is like, this is what I love. This stuff is yeah. work to me. Yeah. Like it's yeah. so much yeah. fun, and I think, I think coming from the idea of like a sports background where yeah. the team. It's all about the team first yeah. mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And like mm-hmm. learning those, how to play that game it's and like, then knowing It's for the like, betterment of yeah, the, like of the if, whole. If they were like, hey, Pooch, we want you to play Booster, but you have to be in all these Justice League side yeah. character movies yeah. where you're only yeah. in it for a little bit. I'd do that. Yeah. I'd just sprinkle a little paprika in there and give everybody a <laughs> little pink spoon. And then they get the whole Booster Gold Sunday. Okay. When, okay. When, yeah, but I... I Something like, and especially in that industry yeah. where it is such a dream come true. Sure. Just to, right, right, right. Like, I don't sure. mean disrespect for any actors. You're playing pretend in a sense. You're yeah, playing yeah, a game absolutely. that we all played as kids. Like, absolutely. We're Cowboys and Indians, Hector and I are Indians. Yeah. You guys are Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that okay? Or yeah, yeah, that's Cowboys? fine. No, that's yeah. fine. I'll okay. No, but, that's it's, but yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's basically that. So, yeah. it, and then the idea of getting to play a superhero, it's yeah. like, what? Yeah. But I'm also the kind of guy, I'm not a Jake Gyllenhaal where I'm like, I don't want to be <laughs> playing these dark, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. like I want to get lost in fun characters. Yeah, I don't. Yes, okay. You know what I mean? Like, yes. like if Marvel, Most DC, Nightcrawler, more like Twenty One Jump. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if DC or Marvel came to me and they're like, "Hey, Pooch, we want you to be so and so in these movies for the next fifteen years." Mm-hmm. Where do I sign? <laughs> yes. Give me the pen right now. Because it's yeah. like for a lot of these uh-huh. actors, like like a Chris Evans, yeah. yeah, it was a big commitment, and yes. he's not sure. He wanted to direct a I little bit. I want to do Snowpiercer. Like, yeah, yeah. I want to do all these other movies. Mm-hmm. Get me in front of a. Get me in front of a green screen. Mm-hmm. Put me in a harness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put on one of them Kia, muscle suits. <laughs> let me let me train for six months and just get yep. as jacked as possible. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, chicken breast and broccoli. Bring it. All, all day let me do that and then like <laughs> yeah i i want to say something so let me yeah. let me it's do so it let i want to say something it. about pooch too, about about let, pooch here's the deal let me, like let me do this it. is this is the reality i've known pooch for a couple years now we've known yeah. him for a few years yeah. now and like when i when i told him hey there's this character booster gold what a great character i feel yeah. like you would be great for him or like this type of character whatever if i felt like pooch was the type of guy who pretty early on wouldn't be 100% in on an Sorry. idea like this. Yeah. I would have stopped bringing it up. Yeah. Yeah. But we but every time we hang out we talk about this character, we mm-hmm. you know, we got him Booster Gold issue number 1 for uh, for yep. his birthday. Like yep. uh. it's these things where like the reason we keep circling back to it is because I know Pooch and the type of guy that he is, he is like a Robert Downey Jr. in that he will inhabit that role of Iron Man and he really loves it and mm-hmm. it really feels like he loves it. He loves talking about it. He loves being a good actor in it, but he also loves yeah. Like you're saying the team element. He loves the um, the the joy that it brings to people. Yeah. He takes it seriously. It. The fantasy of it, the fun of it. It's yeah. all these. It, it's not a burden to him. Right? No. And I feel like Pooch is the type of actor that would 100% be okay with being yeah. synonymous, like being thought of as being this character. Yeah. Because oh, it would yeah. also be Pooch. Yeah. yeah. It's. I bet you if you go talk to Robert Downey Jr. after him doing it now for 10 years yeah. plus, yeah. and whatever happens next, like. There's going to be times where it's like it, it it's it's hard for him it might be hard for him to to not con- to just consider that as just a role because yeah. it is so much more yeah and it is and has yeah. impacted his life in so many ways impacted and so many other people and lives. those yeah. two characters are so similar the character yeah. of Robert Downey Jr. and his life and the character of Tony Stark mm-hmm. and so all of these things it's all simpatico for a reason yeah. so it just so happened that like the stars align and and that character of Booster Gold a lot of similarities and background to Alex Puccinelli mm-hmm. so that's yeah. another you know you were drawn to it so it's just like this perfect thing it's like yeah. Pooch could you play another superhero absolutely. Absolutely. I could see you as a lantern. Hell yeah. That would be I dope. Could he could a be a great guy yeah. gardener. Yep. He could be a great Hal Jordan. Mm-hmm. He could be a great any type of all these different characters. But I feel like it's just so funny that we hit, that nail it. Uh, we hit it the nail on the head with this Booster the Gold character. The first time. Because it's just like, <laughs> it's like I cannot think of Booster without thinking of Pooch. Yeah. You know, anytime I in, in yeah. deal with the character. And that's that's awesome. And it's just a compliment to like how I feel about Pooch as a dude. Where right, I'm just like, right. I love this guy, yeah. and I feel like he, you know, there's so many. <laughs> hug it out, hug it out, guys. <laughs> there's so many things that just line up. Yeah. So, like, I, I, when you ask that question, I'm like, I don't think Pooch would be the type of guy that would be like, 
um, no, 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 you know, yeah. I'm ne- Leonard Nimoy, and I want to s- distance myself from Spock. He would be, he would he be Leonard. Around. He would be like, Leonard yeah. at the end of his life, yeah. at the beginning. That's who, yeah. how Pooch would be. And for his whole right, life, at yeah, the beginning, right from and the beginning. For, yeah. And, yeah. You have a qu- question? Oh, no, I see. Uh, Christina Huff said, like, she understands my point, but she also says, like, when when movies like that happen, yeah. you get offers, other stuff. Yeah. Totally. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Me being the person, I know exactly what kind of movies I want to do. Yeah. It's yeah. 21 Jump Street. It's action comedy. Yeah. Right, right, That's right. me. I'm, I'm built for fun. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. is my tagline for mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alex Buccinelli, built, built for, fun. for fun. When the yeah. sun is right. The thighs are tight no, yeah when, when the, the sun, sun is bright the sun is bright, the bright. 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 right yeah the thighs uh, are right and the one we always say all the time me and cynthia when we sit down we go and baby's in the crib. baby's in the crib <laughs> baby's in the crib <laughs> baby's in the crib <laughs> but it's I, it's it, I understand other actors sure and their process and, and yeah. they want to expand on 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 their characters and all that stuff me it's like i want to do movies that people quote yeah and mm-hmm. make them smile yeah because it's like the reaction i got out of uh infinity war yeah mm-hmm. is beyond special and and i think that's something a lot of actors don't realize mm-hmm. like what robert downey jr has done he's made so many people happy yeah mm-hmm. yeah and and star lord and all these guys chris mm-hmm. pratt and chris mm-hmm. evans and everybody they go to it's hospitals like, they visit yeah kids. it's like that's come what it's on. all about it's yeah, like that on. is so much bigger than anything else like you're on right, right. screen forever yeah and yeah. people are like i mean for a little kid who's dying to be like i mm-hmm. want to meet chris pratt i want to meet robert downey jr is Come bigger on. than anything have you the heard world. the story that uh, chadwick boseman tells about black panther he said that during the production he yeah. was in contact with this kid who uh, had cancer and it wasn't looking good for him. Mm-hmm. And he was telling yeah. the story like in front of a in front of a, a crowd of press, and he was just like crying. Oh yeah, oh, he was crying, not? and he was like, yeah. And so uh, we showed him, you know, like it was. Yeah. He was getting worse, and they showed him the movie, and the kid died four four days later. And wow. he was yeah. like, that really showed me the impact of like yeah. what you know, <laughs> like what happens. This kid was holding on so hard yeah. Yeah. that he wanted to see this movie because it was so special to him that like. You know, he God. saw it and he's like, you know what? All right, I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm okay now. Yeah, you know? yeah. So it's, it's, it's uh, stuff like, that. and I could see you visiting a hospital and like I, uh, cheering up oh kids. Oh my God! <laughs> like it's like pooch with the red nose on. For real, patch pooch. Yeah, patch yeah. pooch, patch pooch, patch pooch. There you pooch, go. pooch, pooch, pooch Adams, or, or pooch Adams, <laughs> pooch, <laughs> pooster <laughs> Adams. But yeah, it's it's like it didn't. I've always been affected by movies, but it wasn't until I saw Black Panther with my wife yeah, where I was yeah. like, oh my God! For everybody, my wife is black. We went and saw Black Panther Mm -hmm. and looking over at my wife and just tears running down her face. Uh, Just hearing the drums. And Mm -hmm. I look over. She she plays the drums in our house all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just plays that soundtrack and and that Mm -hmm. score. And it's so, like, knowing that you did that for someone is just so powerful and so cool to me. Like, Mm -hmm. Like, if I came here... And someone would say, hey, Pooch, you playing Booster made me laugh so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my family and I watched the movie together. And, and it uh, it's one of our favorite things to do. It's like, yeah. come on. That's what it's, that's that's what what it's, it's all about. about. It's, that's not about it's, all it's not about the paycheck. It's yeah. not about advancing your career. Yeah. It's not about the accolades. It's but not about that. nominations. For sure. I, right. I mean, it's great. It's not like you're not going to say no to money either. Right, right, right. Yeah, who doesn't yeah. want money to yeah. do something they love to do? <laughs> exactly. I feel like, especially exactly. with a guy like Robert Downey and those guys at those at that level where it's like their their paychecks are so ridiculous that it's like, what do what does somebody that rich do with their money? With and that. you watch Robert Downey and he really is like promoting yeah. charities and like yeah. and I'm like, yeah, that's what you. I think that's what you. That's a great way to live. Yeah. When it's like money is no and it's just money issue. Yeah, right. no, it sounds yeah, weird. Right, right. It's just money. It's gonna, it it's gonna go. It comes yeah. and goes. Yeah, but but yeah. this this is forever. <laughs> this is forever. Guy. Get, get in here. Uh, this is forever. Oh. Right here. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. We can't, we can't freeze it. No. Somebody no. has just frozen it. They're gonna send oh, it to okay. you. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna wrap out talking about Han Solo, the solo Star Wars movie. Yeah, we're gonna touch on it briefly. Very uh, briefly. We don't, no we don't, spoilers, we don't want right? to go into spoilers. No, no spoilers. we don't want to go into spoilers. Yeah. Um, I, I will start, and I, I kind of went already a little bit on Twitter, and I talked about it a little bit. For me, the Han Solo Star Wars movie was a very okay movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't love it. I definitely did not hate it. I thought it was really fun. If you are just looking for a fun Star Wars adventure or a fun adventure movie set in the Star Wars universe with a really great and fun cast, um, really great visual effects, and and some laughs. It's great. Mm-hmm. I really yeah. enjoyed it for yeah. that. If you are looking for something that's a little bit deeper and sort of goes into 
not necessarily all the wise of Han Solo, but maybe giving you a little bit more of a layer deeper story that really adds to the character of Han Solo, it's not there. Yeah. Mm, but again, no. you're looking for fun? Han Solo movie is fun. Yeah. If you're looking for depth, you're not going to find it there. It's a, it's a popcorn movie. Yeah. Uh, I, there's I, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I personally thought it was a snooze fest. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I, uh, looking back on it, like the next day, I had completely forgotten that I had seen that movie. Damn. Like, Damn. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah. Like, yeah. I d- went after, and this is a, a bad benchmark to have, but after I saw Infinity War, I was thinking about it for weeks. Oh, I'm and still I thinking about it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Read the, I reread like, the comic. Exactly. You yeah. read the comic. Like, you go, oh, by, it God. makes you want to watch the movies, it makes you want to jump into everything else. Mm-hmm. I saw this movie and I was like, uh, so yeah. I don't even want to see a Lando movie like at this yeah. point. I'm just mm. like Donald Glover was the best part of that movie and I'm done seeing him as this character. So it's, let's it's the move easiest, on. It's the easiest thing in the world. But if Ryan yeah. Coogler was doing Lando, I'd be like, yes, of course. I'm all about that. Like yeah. I want to see yeah. Ryan Coogler, director of Black Panther, yeah. take Donald Glover's character and go. let's do a Lando yeah. movie. But I'm with you, Augustine. Like after I saw Rogue One for the first time, yeah. right where Rogue One ends, I was like, pop in a new hope. I want right. to watch yeah. every exactly. Star Wars movie. Exactly. I was like jacked. I'm like, yeah. yes, dude. Yeah. Yes. Again, Infinity War. I want to watch all 18 yeah, movies. I want to read all again. the comics. Yeah, like every the comics. Yeah. At the end of Solo, I was like, uh. Yeah. And it was a right. real bummer. I yeah. would rank it where the prequels are down here, yeah. Solo, Ooh. and then every other Star Wars movie is above it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. the worst movie I've seen. No. A very entertaining no. movie. I, moments I loved. Yes. Moments I was like, what a great that's, moment. I think yeah. that's the thing yeah. about the Solo movie is it has really good moments. Yeah. And I'll also say, I, I don't think that anybody else except for a guy like Ron Howard could have done this. Mm-hmm. Right. To come in right before the movie is supposed to actually yeah. be done and in the can to come in and redo 70% of it. Yeah. That was a huge feat. Yeah. I think for that, Jeez. that they is a huge off. commendable feat. Absolutely. The fact that he was able to pull that off. Could have been amazing. a train wreck. Could have been a train been wreck. Way worse than Absolutely. It, it could have. It could have. And I just, there was some acting moments that just didn't sell me. Mm-hmm. It's just when s- something happens and he sees somebody from his past, I was like, this is it. Like, that's yeah. the only thing you're going to give me. Mm. Like, give me some character moments here. Like something. Mm-hmm. I feel like the other character besides Lando that I enjoyed was Chewie. Yeah. Because mm. we just need my more favorite, Chewie. We, Chewie. We need more Chewie, more Chewie in Chewie. our lives. Yeah. Like, Chewie was you great. can't have enough Chewie. And so yeah. he, he added some good stuff to it. But other than that, like, I liked Lando. I liked Chewie. Yeah. I liked Han. And I thought the guy, that guy who played him, Alden Ehrenreich, Alden Ehrenreich. Yeah, yeah, how'd he yeah. do? Great job. I thought so I, too. I, by the end of the movie, I was like, him and Donald Glover, I think, worked great together. Yeah. And I, yeah, did, I did okay. not. For what was written, I yes. thought they were great. I never once thought, man, nobody could do it except Harrison right, right, while right, watching right. the movie. Yeah, which means that's true. He that's did a true. great job and he was able that's to bring cool. his own thing while not doing an impression. And like overall, really great job that I was like, all right, if he, if he gets another solo movie, that yeah. one could be better than this. Yeah, and yes. I'm okay with it. And I also really liked L3, the female yes. droid that female Lando Orange, had that yeah. does right, this little thing. Right, right. That was also a really fun character that's, yeah. that's as entertaining and fun as like R2SO from uh, Rogue One, yeah. K2SO from, from, uh, they, from Rogue they One. They or really Chopper explored or, how robots yes. that are almost sentient yes. feel about being feel robots that are almost <laughs> yes. sent, being huh. property. So, but yeah. for me, the number one thing, the number one reason I didn't love it is because uh, I thought about it and I felt like. I did not get emotionally invested in in Han in this story. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't enough for me. Maybe it was the editing. Maybe it was the writing. Maybe it was how the story just played out. Yeah. I just wanted. I'm like. I just want more time where Land or Han just like sits with yeah. Chewie to build that relationship. Sits mm. with right. the, exactly. the female character played exactly. by a Game of Thrones Kira. actress mm-hmm. Kira. Yeah. S- maybe sits with Lando and builds that friendship more. That I'm like. I felt maybe it was Non-spoilers. a little bit, a little bit too much kind of like focusing on the ensemble yeah, of everyone because yeah. there's a bunch of other actors. Right. Woody Harrelson. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a fun Newton, Star Wars And movie. I didn't yeah. care about anybody else other than yeah. those four I mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm like, maybe I wanted it to be more of a Han yeah. thing than like it's the, than the Han, Star right, Wars right, right. Yeah, yeah. sort of, you know, ensemble the, piece. The so, thing I will so give it props on is that it did its thing. Like it was mm-hmm. a Han Solo movie. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then later on it ties into the bigger universe. Mm-hmm. And what I want to hear is after people start watching it is what you think of a specific moment to yeah. towards the end of the movie but don't put it happens. in the chat don't put people, it in the chat not a lot of people have, have seen, seen it, it. but there's it. there's something that happens that ties it into the bigger universe yeah Ooh. and to me it fell flat sure but i want to mm. see what people who it'll are be interesting really to see invested in it. as opposed to it almost felt like again it almost felt like a marvel movie moment yeah, yeah. because you're like yeah. whoa look at this look at this very like crazy kind of out there nod to the bigger world right, right, we're right. used to that shit in Marvel movies yeah. and I feel like mo- the Marvel movies especially recently they've been really hitting that stride where like yeah. it just it really really fits yeah. it's really good so it's gonna be yeah. very interesting to see how 
audiences react to right. it. They, how, right. How they react to this. Because we're not used to that in a Star Wars movie. Not really, no. And yeah. this was kind of like out of left field as well, yeah. you know? And so, uh, yeah, I just want to see how people react to that, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because our mm-hmm. theater was just kind of like, oh. Yeah, yeah I didn't have a big okay. reaction to it, and I thought I was okay. going to have a big one. Uh, yeah. As opposed to like, I give you example, yeah. Thor: The Dark World, when Loki's shape shifting and he turns into Captain America, oh, yeah. everyone's like, "Oh, fuck!" That's yeah, so yeah, good. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just used that to those little, those kinds of yeah. things. So, going to yeah. be really, really, really interesting. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Again, for me, thought it was inter- uh, again popcorn movie, great mm-hmm. fun, good laser and, fights. Yeah, like and cool. different and differently, and I would say in a different way than the Transformers movie. To me. Transformers mm-hmm. movies are just kind of big, loud, and dumb, and they're insultingly bad. Yes. <laughs> they're like they like insult my yes. intelligence, and yes. they're like yes. racist and yes. sexist. So this, like, no. this is not that. This is still no. like popcorn fun, and you enjoy the characters, you enjoy some of the quips. Yeah. But to me, again, it there there it's just not enough depth for for me to say this was the best Han Solo story to tell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. we'll see. They they said they were going to do more. I'm kind of okay either way. If they yeah. do do more of these movies, um, I want more depth. There you go. Was it nostalgic at all to see some the of it Millennium Falcon was and some there? of it some of it wasn't, which is good. Yeah. I didn't gotcha. want yeah. it to just be yeah, like yeah. reveling in nostalgia. That, oh, look then, how clean it is. Yeah, if it's yeah. just if it's just a big nostalgia fest, to me it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, but again, as a action adventure movie, it's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's totally fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Uh, try not to spoil it if you Please can. Please don't spoil it. Uh, yeah, but, you know. It Michael it, it, in the it, chat says, right Augustine, that part was dumb. <laughs> 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 the part that I was just talking about. That part was So, dumb. you know, okay. like, I thought it was okay. Yeah. I was just like, eh, kind of meh. I didn't think it was dumb, but mm-hmm. I was just like, eh. <clears throat> Yeah, it's <laughs> it's one of those things, and I, and, I, and I hate saying this because I don't mean this in a bad way at all, but a lot of times I feel like these things are done in these movies to just – cause the audience members to smile and be excited mm, yeah it's like a high you hit a high and mm-hmm. then it's gone and you're like okay are you I gonna deliver on this i or? didn't even hit that high i was like wait where is this gonna go from yeah. here yeah, right, like, right where are we going with this thing and so that's i was more confused rather than like excited right you know mm-hmm. yeah so we'll see we'll right. see we'll find out we gotta um, get out of here guys Adam, oh, yeah, see right. 2001 oh, yeah, Pooch, uh, right. cool. thank you so much oh, for coming you guys yeah buddy thank you're you the, you're the literal best i appreciate that you guys if you i'm telling you i'm trying to do you can't see what's going on under this table right oh, now oh no but you're I'll, about to flip old, it but boner a, no no there's a there's boner. just a, a love boner going boner on right now okay yeah bro boner 2018. A broner. A broner. Okay. There's so many okay. broners. Broner. Do you hang out with your bros and you have and you're just like so on the same page that you all just get rock hard boners? Rock yeah. hard boners at the same time. Totally. Why do you dude, think happens I do the show every Thursday. <laughs> happens all the time, dude. It's not a big deal. Hey, Pooch, you guys don't get boners? Where could, wow. <laughs> where could everybody find you on the internet? You can find me at Part Time Adult on Instagram, and then I have a Twitter account. I I don't get it still. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to. I you love your, you Instagram you your Instagram yeah. stories. Go yeah. follow Pooch on Instagram because his stories are gold. Instagram yeah. is good. We're going to have some more stuff. And then coming up soon, I do a little side hustle. I'm a personal trainer. It's another story. <laughs> also voiceover <laughs> actor. I, yeah. But I, I work at gyms to get a free membership because I don't <laughs> like paying it because it's a ripoff. <laughs> but uh, I work for this company called Victorious. It is a live streaming uh, workout? workout service. Oh, no way. It's going to be launching, I think, next month. And I'll Don't get, tell Claire. Don't I'll tell give Claire. Guys, she'll Claire, give you all her money. There. She'll go broke. She's going to get jacked. <laughs> yeah, She's going to be but sending pics <laughs> like, thanks, Pooch. Thanks, Bam. Pooch. Bam. <laughs> Bam. It worked for me. <laughs> yeah. Results. <laughs> Results. But it's uh, coming in June, I think, and I'll gu- I'll give you guys the information. Okay. But You should do it because guys, one of the best workouts I've ever done yeah. is when Pooch it kicked is, my ass at the gym. It's it awesome. It is so much fun. I, I, I love having fun, as you can tell, with anything I do it is not a typical like hey let's everybody be cool and flex mm-hmm. we talk about movies we or at least i talk to talk about <laughs> movies while we're training and stuff like that but yeah. try it out i'll give you guys all the information you can plug it and all that stuff but yeah, yeah. part time adult instagram and uh twitter and, t- and the go. tweets and the tweets the tweets. Yeah. Yeah, that's right check out uh <laughs> check out YouTube.com slash Nerdist. I have a new animation show that came out. First oh, you episode, do? First episode Ooh. came out today. Ooh. Centered on animation. Along animation. with what's his name? Uh, Yako? So um, Rob Paulson? No, yeah. he has, he's got his own show because Rob he's, Paulson's Rob Paulson. He's okay. amazing. Yeah. But, um, but I do do a little promo for his show, okay. Talking Tunes. You do? Uh, at the end of it, um, because we're trying to do more animation stuff and yeah, they're letting yeah, us yeah, do yeah. this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm have excited. Me on. Have so me check on. that out. Have me on. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, shoot some. Uh, you sh- oh, fuck. I forgot to talk to yeah. Scott. It's Damn okay. It. All right, it's I'll okay. get him up. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, you can find me at L underscore Santo Taco. I'm not a restaurant, I'm not a band. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You can find me at the Arclight in Hollywood watching 2001 A Space Odyssey tonight uh, for the last time. And okay. uh, we'll catch you next oh, yeah. week. You got to go right now. Yep, I am. All right. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye.